Okay, so this is the acid base titration lab. It was called micro scale, uh, small scale. Uh, smaller scale means smaller waste, which is good because we don't want a lot of waste product products. Um, make sure you have watched or are currently watching the, I think it'd be hard to watch two videos at once, but make sure you've watched the video of actually doing the lab, my son and I, uh, to get the lab data for this. Make sure you also have a reference table and a calculator um, going through. So we have the formula right here. It's on table T. If you don't have table T, you've got this. Notice that in our formula, we have these two additional pieces, the equivalences of the H plus, which is acid side, and OH minus, which is the base side. So whatever the formula is for acid and base, <coughs> we need to figure out how those H pluses and OH minuses dissociate and then count those up and add them into the formula. So going back here, you should have seen that we had the flask, goggles, grid cylinder, um, all this stuff here. We did not use distilled water because I was recording at home, but really you should just because it eliminates some of those extra ions in solution. And so you watched me do the procedure and the data. So obviously if we're working with an acid, you would expect a low pH, which was a two. It was vinegar. Now let's back up a second. Vinegar is not an IUPAC official name. Vinegar is a common name. So we're going to need to figure out what the formula is for vinegar. And before the formula, we need the name. So vinegar is known as acetic acid. So if you go on reference table K, you'll find there are two forms of acetic acid. There's HC2H3O2. And there is the other one, I can't, uh, CH3, I can't remember for a second, COOH. And they're both aqueous, which means dissolved in solution. So which of these is going to be better for us when we're talking about acids as in acids and bases? Well, maybe you're not familiar, um, but this is, this bottom one is the organic way. And that is not going to be easy to show how H pluses dissociate. So we're going to get rid of that one. We're going to focus on this formula right here, HC2H3O2. So hopefully you recognize this as a polyatomic ion, acetate. Acetic acid comes from acetate. So this C2H3O2 treated as a group. It's not going to break apart. So if you were to dissociate this thing, you'd have H plus, only one of them, and you'd have C2H3O2 minus acetate. So the H plus equivalence for acetic acid is a one. There's only one ionizable hydrogen that comes off. These hydrogens are locked in and will not break apart into those ions. So since we've already figured out that the H plus equivalence is one, I know I'm gonna need that. I'm just gonna throw this down here. And you know, cause you're smarties, that you don't find any mathematical change when you multiply by one, but it does show that you understand that we had uh, only one ionizable hydrogen. So we're gonna keep that there. Um, okay, so then we had our base. Can I draw in this blank space? Great. Look at that. So the base used was sodium hydroxide, which is NaOH. And if you didn't know that, it's on reference table L. We tested this pH of 12, which makes sense, high pH for bases. How will this dissociate? So we're going to have Na plus and OH minus. Notice that there's only one OH there, which means the hydroxide equivalent is going to be one for all of our math. So again, whoops. So again, like I said, multiplying by one doesn't change your answer, but it is good practice to include that 
in our math because it shows that you understand that we only have one ionizable hydroxide here. So we've got those ones. Um, why is that D floating? Weird. All right, there we go. All right, now back to the lab. Um, in the video, you should have watched that in trial one, we used 10 drops of acid in the flask. In addition to 10 drops of acid in the flask, we put 10 milliliters of water just because it was micro scale and it would be really hard. Uh, you need to dilute it a little bit, just get a little bit more volume. And then we put in phenolphthalein, uh, that indicator. It started off colorless and it turned pink when we reached the end point. The end point is when you have equivalent moles of acid and base. And that took 13 drops of base. So now we need to use the titration formula in order to calculate. I only use orange because why not? Beep, beep. Kind of. All right, so. And, um, we, what is it? Nutri-cream bar? Okay. I'm not a fan of Nutri-cream bars. All right, back to this. Okay, so. We are going to use um, the molarity from here. The concentration, I can't figure out colors, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> on the side of the bottle, it said that the base was 0 0.50 molar. And um, hopefully you could hear that. If not, there it is. So that's the molarity of my base. I'm going to include it right here, 0 0.50. And then for the volume of the base, I'm going to use the drops. So our units would not be milliliters, they'd be drops, and that's okay. All right, so then back over to the acid side. We don't know the molarity of the acid. That's the whole point. That's what we're solving for. So there's my variable. You can call it X if you want, it's no big deal. And then our volume is 10 drops. All right, so there we have it set up. H plus equivalence, molarity of the acid, volume of the acid, equals molarity of the base, volume of the base, hydroxide equivalence. Now it's time to do some math. So 10 times 1 is 10 times MA. I'm going to leave that side here. Let's multiply. Uh, let's give a, here we go. Let's multiply these out. So 0.5, and I'm not going to worry about sig figs right now. It's just not super important. 0 0.50 times 13 times 1, it's going to give me 6.5. And this is going to be 10 times, let's just call it x for now. So divide both sides by 10 to get x by itself. So 6.5 divided by 10 is 0 0.65. Now what are the units? This is molarity, so 0.65 molar. Let's take a look at our answer and see if it makes any sense. So <clears throat> you'll notice that the base is slightly less um, in terms of concentrate, it's slightly less concentrated, the molarity is a little bit smaller, which means we would need a little bit more of it to neutralize the acid. The acid is a little bit stronger molarity. Okay, so that's good. Now you want to call it 0.7? Go for it. I don't really care. All right, now in the second trial, we doubled the amount of acid. We had 20 drops this time. Once again, we're solving for the molarity of the acid and the volume is 20, 20 drops. And you noticed in the video that it took 31 drops of the base. So that is our volume. And it hasn't changed. We still have that same molarity of base, which is 0 0.50. All right, so once again, we're solving for molarity of the acid. So let's do 0.5 times 31 times 1 gives me 15.5 over here. And let's just call this 20 times MA or 20X. So to solve for x, let's divide both sides by 20. So 15.5 divided by 20 gives me, uh, this time I have more decimal places, 0.775. I'm going to call it 0.78 molar. 
you might notice that is kind of different from the first trial. And you know what? That's okay because, you know, really I should be doing a thousand trials to get as low of an error as possible. But I don't, ain't nobody got time for that. So we're, we're just going to go with this. All right, let's do our last trial. You'll remember in the last trial, we started with drops of B. We knew our B first. And so if you added base first, and again, we still know our molarity. If you added base first, you started with phenolphthalein being pink. And then as you added the acid, which we are still figuring out the molarity, as you added the acid, it started to turn colorless or clear, if you will. Um, and that took 12 drops. Okay. So now let's do some math, figure it out. So 0 0.50 times 20 times 1 gives me 10. Guess I didn't need a calculator for that one. Uh, 12 times 1 times x. Oh. 5 by 12, 5 by 12. This time it's 0.83 repeating, which no repeating allowed here. Let's just do that. Okay, so our values are not super duper consistent. And you know what? That happens sometimes. But we'll need to find an average. Now, you're going to call me mean. I am not going to show you how to calculate an average because you should know that by now. But remember, that's, I'll give you the formula, trial one, value, plus trial two, value, plus trial three, value, add them up, whatever that is, divide by three. And that should be your average molarity, which would be blah, 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 capital M for molarity, okay? So you'll solve that on your um, Google form. And then now you will notice that some of the questions here are not exactly the same as the questions on the Google form. I want you to answer the questions on the Google form. I don't want you to worry about all of these questions because there are some discrepancies. Again, reach out if you have any questions, and uh, good luck.